Thank you for being a friend Travel down a road and back again Your heart is true You're a pal and a confidant I'm not ashamed to say I hope it always will stay this way My hat is off Won't you stand up and take Stand up and take a bow. 
you watching? That was yesterday. There were 162 work hours put in yesterday between 9 and 3 with this wonderful community. Uh, in our work day, I want a special shout out and thanks as always to Sabrina Fricks for just kind of being the visionary behind these quarterly days and anchoring it with Lynn. But especially yesterday, Teresa Owens and her mighty muscles and uh, all of the people that came to work the outside. If you haven't looked around, especially the front of the building, look out there today. It's a transformation that is spectacular. The olive tree has shape and form and beautiful things to it. It won't hit you in the head when you walk by anymore. And uh, it's awesome. So to those of you who helped out yesterday and you saw the food, that's really what we do together. We eat. And then we clean up a little bit and then we eat some more. It's awesome. So thank you for that and good morning. Welcome to Center for Spiritual Living, Greater Las Vegas. It's a perfect day in paradise always, right here in Paradise, Nevada. So would you just say after me, it's a perfect day. I'm so glad to be here. God is so good. And so it is. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, a couple things I want to mention. To, uh, before I do that, though, I want to welcome you. If you're here for the very first time especially, uh, we are so grateful that you came to check us out. And whatever it is that prompted your appearance here, whether it was somebody's invitation or you saw us on the web or you saw people out here having fun while they dug in the dirt yesterday and you're like, what's up with that? Um, and you wanted to come in and see more. Whatever it is, we believe that it was the presence and activity of the divine, of God in you as you, bringing you into our environment here this morning. You're absolutely welcome here on your journey of faith, and as you awaken to your spiritual magnificence, we invite you to continue coming back and share in our fellowship, in our classes, in our, in our social events, in our fun times that we have together. It's awesome to have you here. If you came back for a second time, thanks for coming back, and I trust that something is piquing your interest enough to have you join us on a regular basis. And if you are here all the time, it's great to have you here. If you're joining us online via our live stream, uh, at this very moment, welcome, or if you're watching us later on YouTube, welcome to you too. Uh, so anyway, before we um, uh, move into our announcements, because there's lots of great stuff going on as we enter September, we have uh, a celebration this morning because it's the first Sunday of September. So would my beautiful and wonderfully talented uh -huh, singers come up because we've been practicing. We actually stayed after work day yesterday and have been all night rehearsing this song for you. Um, so if you were born in the month of September, we have this special tribute to you. So if you were born in September, would you please, uh, if you're able, would you please stand? We want to celebrate. I know there's more than Woo! Steve. All right. All right. Here we go. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. And as a special treat for those of you who were born in the month of September, after service this morning, go to the front of the food line. Really, really. And if people yell at you, say, hey, it's my birthday. I can do what I want. And Reverend Doug said it was okay. Oh, okay. And then they'll find out what year you were born. That'll be awesome. Anyway, so please do that. Go to the front of the food line. And speaking of birthdays, this beautiful flower arrangement this morning was sponsored this morning by Fran Peterson and Frazine Jasper celebrating a birthday of Loretta Furance. Loretta, I know you're here. Where are you? There you are right there. Woohoo! They've, they've told the whole world. Is that okay? Your 80th birthday. All right. Congratulations, Loretta. That's terrific. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That's for sure. All right. Now it's announcement time. So everybody get serious. Ah, forget it. All right. So, um, yeah. Uh, actually, there's, there's a lot going on, like I said. So we have a Wednesday service every week. Uh, this Wednesday is the 12th Dimension. If you've not seen the latest incarnation of this particular service called the 12th Dimension that our amazing music director puts together, it's, it's one of a kind. Extreme Measures, his band, is going to be here live, and they're going to play, what, five pieces? Five pieces. And by the way, Extreme Measures has been invited to perform at the Composer Showcase at the Smith Center this month or November. November. The November Composer Showcase at the Smith Center is pretty cool. So they're going to be there for that. And they're going to be here on Wednesday at 7 o'clock. The multimedia part of the evening, the video part of the evening, uh, Justin has put together a tribute to Dr. Wayne Dyer, a giant in our movement who made his transition last weekend. Justin has put together some clips of his uh, work. It is amazing. I was also made aware that the movie that he did a few years ago, which he filmed, he himself filmed at a Silomar while we were there. Part of it happened while we were there. 
uh, called The Shift is being shown live online uh, free just for the next couple of days. It's been, it's been available for the last week. So just Google Wayne Dyer, The Shift Movie Free, and you'll be taken to a place where you can f uh, watch that. It's a couple hours. It's a really profound movie, um, and it is wonderful. So all of that occurs here on, s on Wednesday at 7 o'clock. We precede that every Wednesday at 5.30 with a soup dinner. So if you would like fresh homemade soup uh, and all the fixings that go with it, you can start at 5.30 over in the great room for a dollar a bowl. Every time you go to the window to fill your bowl, it's a dollar, and it's terrific. So come up. Uh, and, and have a great Wednesday evening with our wonderful uh, Wednesday evening service. Our World Day of Service is coming up in six days. Are you going to come up tonight? Tonight? Yeah, come up tonight and talk about it. We'll just move ahead. Okay. This is Reverend Cindy, and she is anchoring this for us this year. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Or good evening. <laughs> Inside your program, you will see this small slip of paper. This describes the two events that we are participating in this year for World Day of Service. World Day of Service, um, the third annual, is next Saturday. So what we have um, selected for this year's engagement is the Walk in Memory, the ninth annual Walk in Memory, Walk in Hope, um, which is the Nevada Coalition for Suicide Prevention um, fundraiser. And this walk will begin at... Um, Bob Miller Elementary School in Green Valley, right behind Green Valley Ranch. And you can sign up online, register for the walk. We will walk together, all of you who register. We will meet and gather and, and walk together for this fundraising event to bring awareness of suicide prevention to Southern Nevada. Then on the other side of the paper, it talks about Family Promise. Family Promise is an organization that assists homeless families, parent and children, um, in re-entering a home environment. So they support the families in um, getting the kids to school, in getting the parents um, prepared for employment, and in lodging while they are in, uh, transitioning to their own permanent home. We have a box in the lobby where you may donate the items uh, for Family Promise that they use to support these families. The information for both the walk and Family Promise are located at the information table in the lobby. I will also be available to speak to you about that in the lobby after service, so please stop by and see me. Pick up the list, bring your items. Next Sunday will be the last Sunday to um, donate those items directly into our portion of World Day of Service. Thank you. Thank you, all right. And, and by the way, Corey and I have registered for the walk, so if you are going to join us uh, and you have a World Day of Service t-shirt from one of our prior year's activities, wear that. We'll wear them together with our name on them, and, and it'll be fun. So that'll be next Saturday morning. Uh, then Sunday, it's already next Sunday, yes, our annual membership meeting. We haven't had one for about a year and a half, but that comes next Sunday. After this service, we'll dash off. We'll have a bit of a, a bio break, but we'll come back at 1130 and call the meeting to order. If you are a member of this center especially, please do attend. It's one of the rights and responsibilities of membership. If you are not a member, you're welcome to attend to find out how the business of this center is transacted by its members every year, uh, but members especially, because we are going to elect uh, four members to our leadership council. We have five nominees to that council. We're going to show you their names and their faces, and then if they're here, we can also have them stand up. One of our candidates is Theo Ann Burns. There's her picture, but there's her body right there. There she is. Next one, we've also got Liz Kirby. I don't think I saw Liz today. I, th I don't think she's here. Liz Kirby is there. And next we have Suzanne Moore. Is Suzanne here? There she is near the back, Suzanne. We've also got Jill Peterson. I know Jill's here. There she is, also getting ready to work in the kitchen. And finally, Barbara Schweppe. You'll see her picture, but she's out of town today. So there she is. If you would like to ask them any questions or meet them after the service, they'll be, they'll be around because they're already highly involved. So that's next Sunday at 11.30. We have classes beginning soon, and that is... Uh, the heart and soul of this center is our, is our adult education, really, to empower our own lives. I'm going to be facilitating a class called Foundations of Science of Mind. It has never been taught here in this particular way. Uh, a couple years ago, Reverend Judy Ann and Claire Summerhill taught a version of this class, but this is uh, a different version, a little bit different. 
It's going to be on Thursday nights, and so uh, Tuesday nights, sorry. I invite you to, uh, that's where it all begins. If you have not yet taken a certificated class, that's where it starts. Or if you would like a refresher with a whole new curriculum and textbook, that would be the one to take. We also have a creative process in the individual class. I believe Reverend Cindy is facilitating that. This thing called you, Lynn is going to facilitate. That is a, it is now a certificated class, yes? And the essential, either or. So you don't have to have a, a foundational class to take this thing called you or you can, and you'll get a certificate. Essential Emma Curtis Hopkins, one of Ernest Holmes' influences as well. Uh, that's going to be facilitated by Michelle Pickt. Yes. So all of the information is at the Empower You table outside, so please do check that out. They start just in a couple of weeks, and it is really where uh, you do get change for your dollar. You really, really do. Absolutely. Um, our big uh, annual event called Gourmets for God has kicked off. It's in the great room. Information is beginning to trickle in. We're signing up hosts. If you would like to host a social event for this congregation, you determine the number of people, what it's going to be like, when it's going to be, and all that kind of stuff. It's all up to you. Go find out more information in the great room. And finally, did you bring something to eat for our birthday babies today and the rest of us? If you brought something to eat today, would you please raise your hand? Oh, look at that. That's great. Thank you very much. I really appreciate this congregation stepping up to nourish each other uh, food-wise. Um, and next week, if your last name starts with A, B, C, D, or E, that's an easy one, why don't you consider bringing something? And if that's not your thing, bring someone to share this experience with. Bring somebody that's never been here, that's heard you talk about it, that's really ready for that. Bring someone, and that would be a terrific way to share who we are and what we are doing. All of this information is inside your program or posted on flyers around the center or on our website, so you don't have to worry about remembering it. You've got it right in your hands, and so let's all just set that aside. We're going to move into our celebration now, and we do that in lots of ways, but especially through music. So we're going to sing. The words to the songs that we sing together this morning are all on the screen. This is Eddie Watkins, Jr., and it's true. It's all about oneness in community. If you're able, go ahead and stand up. We're going to sing together. Here we go. One life living as you and me. One light shining as you and me. One love loving as you and me. Because God is all there is. One life living as you and me. One light shining as you and me. One love loving as you and me. Because God is all there is. One love, love, and 
As we move into this morning's contemplative time, please take this moment to silence your cell phones. Thank you. And let us begin with this week's affirmation from your program. We're up on the screen. You might choose to cut this out and read it out loud a couple of times this week. It's just to remind yourself of the truth of your being. And let's say that together now. As I stand in the I am that I am, I consciously align my life as God's life, knowing it is the one and the same. And now just take a nice deep breath and let the music carry you into a place of silence, followed by this morning's meditation and vocation. As I say a tender yes to everything that comes to me, my heart is open, I am free, I open to all that is, it brings me to And I say a yes to everything that comes to me, for I recognize that the divine love intelligence created and creates everything, everywhere, in every moment, in every space, every conversation, every relationship. It is all God. It is all God expressing its love and its joy, its balance. It is all God and nothing else is there. Fully expressed right here, right now, in this very community, in this building, in these beautiful grounds, in the service of love, in the sharing of lives right here in this holy space. For I recognize that God is 
God is all that there is. So I know that God is that life that I am, that it moves through me, it breathes me, it has its way with me. For it is my life, it is all that I am. For there is only this one presence, this one power, this one life, and it is forever expressing itself fully and completely. All that is seen and all that is unseen, it is all God and it is all good. So I know that this spirit, this love intelligence is right here in this room, in this sacred space, in this community. And I feel so good knowing that this is the truth. This is the life. And it feels so good to share it with everyone here and beyond here. For I recognize that spirit is everywhere in every room and every place of prayer. God is and we are. So I simply give thanks with great gratitude and with an open heart knowing that love resides right here in this community and in every community everywhere. So I simply give great thanks. And together we say, and so it is. Amen.
Sherry Komen, it's always so wonderful to have you here, and it, she makes it look so effortless. It's like, wow, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Melvin. That's because she's the best, and Melvin's the best. Yeah. Nice. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Hi. How's it going? I'm just going to cool off a little bit. I was in Reno yesterday. When we landed, it was 50 degrees. Kind of nice for a day. <laughs> So here we are in September already. Isn't that amazing? There is that thing about the older you get, the faster time goes and stuff, and I'm just out to prove it, but still, it's like, wow. So we had a summer, a July, I talked about freedom, and August, I talked about practice and spiritual practice. In September, we're setting ourselves up now to have this wonderful um, month to talk about community, community, communion, commune. Maybe, I don't know, but um, community. And what is community? I thought, well, if I'm going to talk about community, maybe I should give it a context. What does the dictionary have to say about it? They define it as a group of people having cultural, religious, ethnic, or other characteristics in common. Okay, that's easy enough. I guess we're a community. We have a characteristic in common. We have this faith, this philosophy called the science of mind and spirit that we are endeavoring to study and open up to and deepen ourselves in and practice in the world today. It's in a, in a place called the Center for Spiritual Living. So yeah, I guess this is a community. And I think of community in two ways. Community meaning when we come together, we come together in community, but also this place, this Center for Spiritual Living, Greater Las Vegas, is a community waiting simply to be filled, to be available so that people may gather and then do the work that they do and have the experiences that they have uh, together when they gather in community. So here you are. Are you here? Okay, and here I am, and I'm pretty sure I'm here. Um, but why be here? Why be here in person? You could be sitting at home in your jammies, or not, <laughs> watching us on live stream. Hello, streamers, how are you? Um, you could be doing that, or you could just sleep in and get up later and just immerse yourself in me on YouTube. Doesn't that sound like a dream come true? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you're here instead. So obviously that says to me, and it ought to say to you, that there are, there's something, some benefit or something that you derive from being here with others maybe that you wouldn't otherwise do. Maybe it's a commitment to your spiritual practice. Maybe it's because the food is so good. I don't know, but there is, there is, some, there is some benefit to it for you. And I have to assume that it has something to do with the fact that you expect there will be others here as well. 
And so here you are, and maybe you're already regret, regretting your decision. I don't know. But, be, but, but here you are, and it's up to you, really, for yourself, to define and describe what those benefits are for you in this moment and in, a, you know, in general. And yet, I believe that there are also opportunities for us if we look at the theme of community for the month that we can discover greater benefits than maybe you are currently aware of or that I am currently aware of. Maybe there is uh, something to the idea of turning our attention to that and say, what is in this for me and can there be more? Are there more benefits that I have not yet uh, realized from this because what is it that, that this community offers? And so we have an opportunity to look at that and to, to explore what we already know. And coming along in the next couple months, and you'll hear more about this in a couple of weeks, we're going to form focus groups so that we discover where mo even more benefits may be derived and that kind of thing. But it's this opportunity to say, well, here we are, we gather together, and how can we expand the good that we experience as a result of this community. So obviously, you've got some idea for yourself of what this provides. Right now, I want to look at a huge benefit that is pretty much promised to all of us simply by the mission that is emerging as the mission of this Center for Spiritual Living. And that mission is to transform lives and make the world a better place by inspiring conscious union with God in the minds and hearts of all we serve. And so there's already benefits in that statement to, to transform life, my life, and to make the world a better place. That sounds like benefits to me. I mean, if I want my life to be different, I mean, if I want it to be better, transforming it that way, that sounds like a benefit. Make the world a better place, that's a benefit. And how do we accomplish that? We accomplish that by inspiring conscious union with God. Conscious union with God. We have a faith and philosophy that understands this is the truth always. We are one with God. We are one in God. We are one as God, as our wonderful affirmation said. We are that I am that I am. That is who we are, but we're not always conscious of it. And so if we go to, if we attend a place, if we come together in a place that has as its, as its central focus or goal to inspire conscious union, to become conscious of that, then those benefits start to become realized more and more and more. So inspiring conscious union with God is about then, in a broader sense, raising consciousness. If we want to look at the mission of this center at its very basic level, it is about raising consciousness or expanding consciousness. Raising my consciousness of who I am as a creation of God in the world. Raising your consciousness of who you are as a creation of God in the world. And that's a mighty mission, and it is so exciting to... to um, be in a place where that is its intention, its very reason for existence. So if this community is all about raising consciousness, the question is, does it take a community, does it take a village to raise one's consciousness? Is community required? What would you say to that? Not really, probably not. I mean, my consciousness is my responsibility, right? Raising it is up to me, really. So yes, I Suppose I could do it on my own. And yet, to have a group of others who are committed in some way to the same idea, or to be in a place whose very commitment is to raise consciousness, then that helps a lot. It helps a lot to join together with others in community. Now, I could probably, like I say, I could, I don't know, I could maybe do it on my own, but to my way of thinking and to my experience of having been a part of a conscious spiritual community for almost 30 years, it's like, in my experience, the support, the, the, the guidance, the inspiration, the examples that are set for me, when I am in spiritual community together, it really bolsters the work that I'm doing. It really kind of gives it some added oomph uh, that I would not have, I don't think, on my own. I've had such great experiences of all of those things, of the support and the guidance and the inspiration and especially the examples that people set for me whom I admire, or whom I'm learning, like, I don't ever want to do it that way. <laughs> you know, there's, there's lots of ways that examples can be set. So it's like, that's, what, that's what's helping me in community. And as I thought about this, I thought, you know, there's one more thing that a village or a community can provide that, for someone like me, is crucial to my progress, to my growth um, in my life and in my spiritual understanding, and that is accountability. Being with others in some common endeavor, has some built-in components of accountability that 
If I hadn't been a part of a community and had discovered this teaching on my own and tried to work it on my own, I would not be nearly as, as I consider far along as I am on that journey as I am without having others around me to support that idea, to have that accountability built in. I had a really profound ex example of that happen for me on Friday. Not about community spiritually, but something else. Some of you are aware that about two and a half years ago, I started this workout, just a physical fitness um, practice that had been absent in my life all the way up until then. And I, I'm continuing to do it, but it's a solitary thing. It's all by myself. And it's at home. And what I realized after having done it on Friday is, I don't push myself enough. And if I had been with others, if I had been in a group doing this or in a, in a more public location doing that, I would have had the support of others to say, come on, you can do more, you can do more, you can do more. And so that realization was pretty profound for me in writing a talk about this because it's the same idea. I, I would have um, probably understood long before last Friday that I was coasting rather than really pushing myself. Yes, I've had results and they've not been stellar, but they've been fine, and it could have been even more if I had had some support along the way. So I realized that and now, I hope, hopefully I'll be back next week to talk to you, but I will push myself some more, right? <laughs> or I'll phone it in because I'm laying flat on, the on my back in bed because I pushed myself too hard. I don't know what's gonna happen, but accountability, that's a really profound aspect of community that I don't know that we even think about very often. And, and really, it's not, the most comfortable aspect of community either. So here we are in this village called Center for Spiritual Living, Greater Las Vegas. And I, I said, you know, our mission can be kind of condensed into the idea of raising consciousness. It's like, so what is here? What is present and here and available for anyone? Members and friends and people wandering by on the street. What is available in the, in, in the aspect of raising consciousness or even raising awareness or providing that kind of support and even providing aspects of accountability that we may be missing elsewhere in our life? I really want you to listen up. There are so many differing degrees of involvement in this community sitting in this room this morning and some of the things that are available you may not be aware of. So, so listen up because it might be there that you wanna dip your toe in and see, hey, maybe this will be for me in moving myself further along on my journey of awakening. So, and this list, by the way, is, no, is by no means comprehensive because during the meditation service this morning, I had some more uh, pieces uh, reveal themselves that I hadn't written down at first. So there's more that I'm not gonna say, um, and, and if you hear one missing, tell me. But anyway, what, are, what is Center for Spiritual Living doing to fulfill that very basic mission of raising consciousness, spiritually speaking? So, well, we have this, the Sunday service, the Wednesday service, the meditation service, Judy Petit did a magnificent meditation service this morning. It was really expanding. So we have those gatherings. Practitioner sessions. Yes, prayer is great after the service, but to have a full-on session with a practitioner, a, an amazing consciousness raiser. Our Beacon of Light bookstore. There is so much available in there to help expand your consciousness. Our Tuesday morning Adventure in Faith group. It's a drop-in group that starts at 11.30 on Tuesday mornings, right? 11, 11 to 12.30. 11 o'clock Tuesday morning that is there to discuss life and how to apply these principles to life. It is raising consciousness every Tuesday morning. Our revitalized youth and family ministry, having this amazing uh, team of people working to, to, to nurture our young people and our youth, um, and they're getting their consciousnesses raised. Conscious nigh. What is the... <laughs> What is the plural of consciousness? Consciousnesses? Yeah. Okay. I mentioned it earlier. Our classes, our adult classes, that is really where the, where the rubber hits the road, meets the road, because you are in this intensive laboratory, encouraged and supported and prayed for and prayed with to do that consciousness raising on your own. We are doing those kinds of things to raise consciousness simply by our very existence. And then I look at, at uh, what is happening in this community, and I look at the number of leaders that are being created here, and it's, it's, it's wonderful. I mean, I like to think that it is due in some measure to my style of, my own style of leadership, which I hope, I like to think anyway, was described by this quote that is often attributed to Theodore Roosevelt, but it can't be really verified, but sounds good enough. He said, or somebody did, the best executive is the one who has sense enough to pick good people to do what he wants done and self-restraint enough to keep from meddling with them while they do it. <laughs> I'm a pretty hands-off kind of guy because I believe that, that the people that are drawn into this work and that are drawn into service and that are drawn into 
dipping their toe into some kind of leadership are already qualified. Michael Beckwith used to say, God doesn't call the qualified. God qualifies that, those who are called, right? So that's the idea. And so now we have 28 practitioners in a church this size. That's a really, that's a really healthy number. We have five ministerial interns. You know, there is some consciousness raising going on around here. Yeah. Not that these people are the epitome of high consciousness. <laughs> but they are very committed to their own work. Very committed to their own work. And by the way, I am not under the delusion that people who move into this kind of leadership, either spiritual leadership or business leadership in this center, have it all figured out. I certainly don't. One of the things that I'm told people appreciate is when I share my foibles and I share the, the challenges that I have along the way, we all have them. It's not that our practitioners and ministers are any more elevated than anyone else. There is a degree of commitment, though, that is profound. And that's how they step into leadership. And that's kind of the things that, that we are doing around here. And if, if consciousness, raising consciousness, if consciousness also means awareness, because really the, the most generic definition of consciousness is everything that I am aware of, well, this center can also raise awareness. So here's some ways that we're raising awareness in general. With our local outreach, we just recently concluded our, our backpack uh, program for the summer with that neighborhood local outreach. We give a charitable contribution to a local uh, nonprofit organization every month. That is some of the ways that we are raising awareness, uh, both within our congregation and in our neighborhood. Our global outreach, our, our Global Heart Connection International Outreach Ministry is assisting other centers and teaching chapters around the world to raise the awareness of this teaching. Through our social media, our, our Facebook has some amazing, powerful posts on it. We have Twitter. We do a meetup. Those are, we're raising awareness, yes, but also raising consciousness by those means. Um, as our World Day of Service, one of the things that we're participating in is suicide awareness and prevention. I mentioned a while ago our practitioners and ministers had an in-service uh, from that organization to bring an awareness to that and how to identify signs and maybe to support people uh, beyond that, that experience of suicide um, in their life. And so... Reverend Cindy has, has uh, given several and is continuing to give those wonderful um, informational gatherings about end-of-life decisions that we all ought to be looking at and making for ourselves so that they don't get made for us. We've had consciousness cafes where we've invited people to become more aware of why they're present and what's going on with them. We have, every fall, we participate in the interfaith forums from the, the uh, Interfaith Council. We host them often, and we participate in them always. And so those are ways that we also are raising awareness in our community. The focus groups that I mentioned, you know, you'll be hearing of them, and when you hear of one that, that you fit into, please sign up for it, because it is another way, not only for you to raise your own awareness of what, what is here and, and what is available, but also for us to chart the, the future together to say, this is where we're going together. So we're raising awareness in these ways, and that's a really powerful thing. So these are things that are available here, but the, the part I mentioned that isn't always the most comfortable is accountability. You know, does this community also provide uh, support in accountability? You, know, you often hear the phrase, holding people accountable. Well, that really sounds negative. But accountability, as I shared with you when I, when I had my own awareness of it in, in my physical workout program, it's like that accountability is supportive. It supports the intention, whatever the intention is. So what are some of the ways that this community is, is raising the, the level of accountability that we have in our life? And again, this is not always the most pleasant. Sometimes it's fraught and uncomfortable to feel like, oh my gosh, now I'm accountable for what I've said or what I've committed to or what I'm doing. So does this community offer that? Sure. Um, every person who steps into leadership in this center agrees to tithe or to move toward a practice of tithing, 10% of their income. It's kind of like, this is, really, this is like, I'm going to do this spiritual practice to the best degree I can, and I'm going to challenge myself to do that. Members of this center, I talked about our annual membership meeting. Anybody who is a member of this center is asked to make a financial pledge of support, to say, this is what I believe I can do this year to support this center. They're also expected to attend regularly and participate in the life of this center if they still wish to call themselves a member of this center. That is another way that we support accountability. Another way that we can support it, and we do to the best of our ability, is to not tolerate gossip and rumors. You know, a, a spiritual community, <laughs> I don't know what your experience has been in the past, but, you know, churches and spiritual communities can be a hotbed of that kind of whispering. Have you ever had that experience? 
in your, yeah? So one of those things, you know, we, we, we have this, this segment of our new members orientation where we talk about respectful communication and how we invite people to be adults about everything and to go to the person if you've got an issue or a concern, go to them. Don't complain to somebody else about something else. But also the idea of gossip and rumors. Those kind of things can really affect a community and can really kind of dampen one's own spiritual experience, first of all, but also maybe growth. And so as I become aware of anything like that, and, and, and somebody has shared with me recently that it re this community feels pretty darn healthy. You know, that there's not a lot of any undercurrent of anything like that going on, and that's terrific. And I've recently become aware of, of maybe something like that going on, and I get to address that privately with the people that it involves. But it's like we can't do that if we're going to be in community and, and awaken to our spiritual magnificence. We've got to be able to do that freely and safely. And so I guess the, the lesson from that is if you don't know for absolute certainty with absolute certainty that something is true, don't say anything to anyone about it, right? It's kind of like, it's, it, that feels like a normal way of operating. But there's a, there's a permissiveness in the world today, or at least in our culture today, that allows that kind of thing to happen. And it's like, no, we want to be in full-on, vibrant, healthy community together. Not just spiritual community, but in, in the fellowship that we share in our good times together, in our social times together. You can't have that if there's something lying under the surface that's like, oh, I heard that this person or that person is whatever, you know? So it's kind of like accountability, not the most comfortable, not the most um, easy, probably, thing to, to have happen, but it's really, really important. It's really important for my own experience as a, as a human being and my growth and my development, and it's important, I think, for the, the life and health of a community, of, of people who are coming together with that common interest, as the definition says, to be as healthy and free and, and empowered as possible. So those are the kind of ways we can, we can raise consciousness spiritually, we can raise awareness, we can raise the degree of accountability that we each display in our own lives, that we are people of our word, that we walk the talk, and that we are uh, fully prizing of each other, you know, recognizing the divine in each other and having that celebration experience. And that's another thing that I haven't mentioned yet, that that a community can offer. It can offer a built-in cheering section, right, for the wins and the successes and the accomplishments in our life. It's people who are on a similar path, who are, who are doing a similar kind of work, and when we make progress and when we have um, accomplishments, we can say, good for you. That's awesome. So did you bring your pom-poms this morning? Because we have an opportunity to be cheerleaders this morning. Yay, let's hear it. Woohoo! We'll work on that as we go. But we have, as I've mentioned several times already today, I think the heart and soul of this community is teaching. My love of and commitment to this as a teaching center results in these experiences of classes and more classes and people taking them and completing them, and we celebrate their accomplishments. So if you have had a call in the last week or so that there were certificates going to be given out today, I want you to start making your way up here because we want you to come forward and face your adoring cheerleaders. And then all the, the facilitators of those classes as well can come forward. And you're not going to be alone, so somebody's got to be first. So it might as well be Debbie. There you go. Come on up and stay in the light. Don't shrink into the darkness over here. Stay in the light. Awesome. I'm going to grab a handheld microphone, Joe. And I've got number one. Come forward. Uh, by the way, all of the... Oh, thank God Edgar's here. I was going to say, all the men in this room, enrolling classes. Jeez. Good grief. <laughs> Judy Poteet. Here she comes. Let me, yeah, Laura. Good morning. Good morning. Do you want to sure. say anything about this and then uh, hand them? Sure. Come on up. Um, this is, um, these are certificates for treatment and meditation. Treatment and meditation is a class that spends time working with our um, spiritual practice, um, spiritual mind treatment, our affirmative prayer, and uh, does a survey of different meditation techniques. And we had um, nine, nine people, I believe, eight or nine, participating in it. It looks like we have five here today to receive certificates. So Madge, where's Madge? Madge. I don't see Madge. I'll hand him out. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Linda. Linda Dietrich. Congratulations. Oh. <laughs> I can't see it. <laughs> Karen Lawrence. <laughs> I don't see Karen. Barbara Lyle. I don't see Barbara. Well, okay. uh, Danielle Zellner. 
That's it. Oh, I facilitated that class with Jeff uh, Ryan. I was the facilitator the, for the five guests of an abundant life. It's absolutely an amazing class that helps you remember that you are abundant. And in our class, Louise Alton and Mary Martin. I had two more. They're not here. Okay. All right. Thanks. And so Colleen Tanaka is out of the country, I think. Um, but she, I don't need this. <laughs> she facilitated a class called Visioning. How many of you know what Visioning is? Oh my goodness, we're expanding the consciousness here and awareness of that. Visioning will also take place in those focus groups I keep talking about, but this is a class, an immersion class in the practice of Visioning. And so, uh, completing that class were Reverend Laura Alton, right there she is. And Nancy Fontubis, terrific. And two more who aren't here. <laughs> two more who aren't here. Yay. All right. And so also, um, Sharon Nelson, who is in Oregon with her grandbaby, uh, being grandma and taking, yes. Uh, she taught the Beyond Limits class, which is another kind of a, our foundational class. Um, and she taught that. And she had a personal message for each of you who completed that class. And so we've included a copy of it with your certificate because it's a really beautiful uh, tribute and um, cheer for those of you who completed that class. So Debbie Kane is the one who completed that. So there's that. Allison Harnden, terrific. And Edgar Ventura, congratulations. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um, so Laura, I'm gonna, you can hear. And then, um, yeah, um, we have we have four students who, are enter who have entered the professional training, the practitioner training, um, and uh, they had Laura and Lynn as their first year um, tormentors. Uh, the word mentor is in there. Um, <laughs> we get to spend 30 weeks with these uh, amazing uh, individuals on this exploration of what it means to become a pra professional practitioner. And so we have three of them here with us today. The fourth one, actually uh, attends the Center for Spirit, uh, Southern Nevada Center for Spiritual Living with Reverend Marquita. Um, that's Angelina Galindo, but she's here every once in a while too. So we have Jamie Jetty. <clears throat> and Clay T. White. And our fav fabulous cupcake queen, Kelly Marshall. Yay. <laughs> yeah, and um, so at, regarding those first year students, they're about to start their second year, and I've got them for the second year. <laughs> Kelly is so not okay with that. <laughs> we kid, we kid. Anyway. This is an example of consciousness being raised, and they are the ones who, uh, they are representing the ones who have made that commitment over the summer to really uh, go deeper uh, in their own uh, awakening and their own practice. So congratulations to you all, and if you have any questions about God at all, ask them. They know everything. <laughs> congratulations. You may go now. Thank you. Awesome. I've gotten to experience most of them in a class, which is nice, too. It's really terrific. So I guess really what I, I want to say about all of this is I really want to urge you, because you're here. You're here for a reason. Whatever those reasons are, I hope that maybe your consciousness, your awareness of, of more ways to, to tap in uh, is, is being raised here this morning, because I urge you to find more ways to support yourself in your own intention to live spiritually in the world today. It's a, it's a profoundly supportive thing to have a community of others who not are the same as you. That would never happen. Most people who are drawn into a community like this are really um, pretty independent. You know, we, we, we've done a lot of what we've done on our own. But what I want you to... to get is that even if you imagine yourself to be more of a loner, that like Sunday morning is about it for you, you don't really want to hang out with these people because you kind of do it on your own, 
and you're just fine raising your consciousness on your own, that's an okay way to be, but I want you to consider something for a moment, that you are never really alone, that you are never really, that you never really do much of anything all on your own. And I have an example. Corey and I, I mentioned Corey and I went to Reno yesterday for his sister's wedding. And got on the plane, sat down, and started reading the magazine, the Southwest, Southwest Magazine. And I was really struck by an article that was written by uh, Katie Rich, and she writes for Saturday Night Live. Um, and it turns out this article is about uh, teamwork. And the whole issue is called the teamwork issue. Teams, communities, other people. But it was the end of the article that it was like, it just really was like, I don't ever really do anything on my own. There I was sitting on, I mean, Corey was there too, but I was there with my magazine reading the article that she wrote. It was just me and her, right? The end of the article goes like this. I liked working with you, me writing and you reading. And the folks who edited it, she writes, read, eliminated all the swear words. <laughs> the folks who edited it and the people who designed the layout and the typeface and those who put it in the seat back pocket in front of you, we did it. I mean, imagine what it took to get this into my hands on that plane yesterday. It took a village. It took a, it took a community of people. And, and so if you are of the notion that you are a loner and you do things on your own, you never really do. And according to our faith, you are never alone anyway. God's always there in you, around you, as you. And so long as I have anything to say about it, this community will be here for you to join together. So welcome home. Namaste. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So maybe there's something that is piquing your interest already. Maybe you're still not sure. So we'll, we'll do some affirmative prayer, as Laura talked about in that class of treatment and meditation. We'll do some affirmative prayer to, to raise your own awareness of what's your next step to deepen your immersion in this faith. So uh, I invite our ministry of prayer to stand. Our ministers and practitioners who serve this ministry of prayer are committed every single day to knowing that God is the truth of your life and that God is active in your life and that right action is taking place. If you have a specific request of this ministry of prayer, you can write it on the back of your connection card this morning. You can send an email to the ministry of prayer or you can write it on the, on the uh, green cards out in the lobby uh, as a way for you to write a specific prayer request that we are happy to, uh, to address for a couple of weeks. So our ministry of prayer is powerful. This is a great chamber this morning, so thank you all for being here. Let's take in a deep breath now. And we let that breath out. And that is one of the ways that we signal our, our bodies and our minds that we are entering into something that is a little bit different, but it's powerful and it's real. And it is an opportunity for our own consciousness to be illumined with a greater truth. So we set aside all of the activity, all of the information, all of the thoughts about what to do after this service ends or what came before. And we simply immerse ourselves in this present moment because now is all there is, really. And we breathe in and we breathe out. And together we take our awareness to the understanding that there is one life, one creator, one intelligence that is the source of everything, the creator of all. And I like to call it God. It goes by many names, it's known in many ways, but whatever it is that you believe and understand about that creative energy and intelligence is some part of the God that is. But God is all there is. In the beginning, God created so many creation stories. And each of them in some way talk about the divine presence being present. Even before space was created, before the universe was created, before time started, God is. So that one that is beyond time and space is the creator of space and time. The science we believe says that the universe came into being with an unimaginable blast, often called the Big Bang. That was the first moment of time and space. 
and it came into being within the one that is God. There was nothing else for the universe to be created from. So everything is God. We expand our minds to the greatest degree possible to imagine something infinite. And maybe we don't succeed in imagining infinite, but we can say this vast universe continues to expand into that one that created it. Every aspect of the universe, a creation of God, and that means every one of us is a part of that one, never apart from it. God is all there is, God is all I am, God is all we are. And so that one is the truth of ourselves individually and ourselves collectively as we gather together in this community. And so there is something specific, something perfect right here in this community for each one of us because we have said yes to being here. And so I accept for myself and I accept for everyone who continues to show up that perfect experience, that divine intention of awakening and deepening and broadening and having greater faith that is possible through this community. And each of us is then empowered to shine the light out in the world so that the mission of this center, expanding consciousness, becomes real in the greater world because of our presence in it. So I give thanks for that. I give thanks for this gathering this morning, for this space, this center for spiritual living, all centers. All churches, synagogues, temples, cathedrals, and any place people gather to acknowledge the divine. God's light being shined on earth in a greater way. So I give thanks as I let go, knowing that it is good and very good that we are empowered and enlivened by this congregation and community, and that truly God is good all the time as we share in it together here. I let go, together we say, and so it is. ministry of prayer all right and so together as a community we enter into the time of sharing of our tithe or offering a uh, way of, of activating our spiritual awareness of God as source God as supply it is a spiritual practice we give consciously that is the, that's the spiritual practice part of it we're doing this consciously we consciously say there is one source of everything that means the source of my income is not my work or my retirement or my pension or anything it is God and there is no limit to it save the limits I place on it with my own consciousness. So we are raising consciousness together and many of us expanding our experience of this thing called money. So I invite our prosperity acceptors and circulators to come forward. As we receive your gifts, we give back to our denomination 10% and locally a, a stipend into the community so that we keep this good in circulation. So I invite you to give uh, an acknowledgement of your gift, give thanks for what it is that you're giving this morning. Um, hold it somewhere near your heart, give it a silent, heartfelt blessing on, then we'll send it on its way. And to prove that circulation is always flowing, we're going to give, and then we're going to receive from Cherry and Odyssey. <laughs>
That was awesome, guys. Thank you so much. Was anybody standing up in the back going, I really wanted to do that. <laughs> in your mind you were, Pat? Yes, many of us were in our mind. That was great. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Hey, you can also raise your consciousness by prayer, just one-on-one -on -one prayer with a practitioner afterward. Right here in the front, stoles will be around their necks so you can tell. Stoles, not nooses, will be around their necks. Uh, that's our practitioners here. Or in the prayer room, it's a little maybe quieter over there, uh, a smaller space to have prayer. That's available to you, our bookstore. Raise your awareness and consciousness in there and through your fellowship with each other. Please do that as well. So as we prepare to leave here this morning, um, you can turn in your connection cards on your way out and have yourselves a most magnificent week. Make connections with others because you're never on your own. So if and as you're able, go ahead and stand up. We'll do our benediction. Make a connection on either side of you if there is someone on either side of you. And then say after me, today I say yes to an expanded life. I give thanks for this community. And for the opportunities I have here. To realize that expanded life. This week I commit to giving. And to living. More and more every day. I am so blessed, and so it is.